We're going to ask the ushers if you could go ahead and seat the remaining persons that are just now entering so that we can start our funeral services.
even in this, God is still getting the glory. I need you to do me a favor if you're not with the family. I need you to help me create an atmosphere on this afternoon. We came for a homeborn celebration. Let's create an atmosphere that will make this mother feel love. I need everybody who got faith to stand up on your feet and help me give God glory. Come on, let's make the devil out of a liar. That God's going to still get the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Hallelujah. Do, do me a favor on this Saturday afternoon. I, kn I know we are, we are weeping and we are grieving. I, I need you to help me understand what a eulogy service is all about. The eulogy service is to make the devil out of a liar to those who are saved, but also to make this family feel loved. And so it's per the mother's request on today that we have a homegoing celebration for her daughter, and we're going to do just that. And I am so blessed and honored that she thought enough of me to speak well of Mahogany on today and also be used by God to bring hope to the hearts of those who are in this house. We're going to follow our program as printed on today per the family's request. We're going to stick close to this program. I'm going to pastor this entirety of the program and outside of one person who is an elected official, if you're not on the program, we have been asked by the family on today that we stick to this program as printed. And so with that said, we want to first acknowledge my bishop, the bishop of this house, it's Bishop Raymond Whitsey and his wife, Pastor Amethyst Whitsey. We thank them on today for allowing for us and opening up their sanctuary for us to have this auspicious occasion. I also want to acknowledge all the men and women who are, who are clergy on today. If you are a pastor, a minister, or any key layman, will you stand so we can acknowledge you? Will you stand? Amen. Will you stand? Amen. We celebrate you on today as well. Also, we want to acknowledge the elected officials who will be with us on this afternoon. And last but definitely not least, we want to give greetings and acknowledgement to the family of Mahogany. So the program is printed. We're going to have Sister Jones to come now and share with us a musical selection. And right after the musical selection, I don't plan to come back up until necessary. We're going to have our Old Testament scripture reading. It's going to be from Minister Jeffrey Webb from Galilee Baptist Church. Our New Testament selection from Executive Pastor Walter Lynch from Providence Christian Ministries. And right after Pastor Lynch, we're going to have our prayer by Pastor Lynch as well as soon as he finished the New Testament scripture reading. Let the church say amen. Amen. of Psalm, Psalm 37, and it reads, fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thy envious against thy workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, so shall thou Dwell in the land, 
and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Our New Testament reading will come from Romans, the 8th chapter, the 35th through 39th verse. And it reads, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, sword? As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors in him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of Christ, which is in God, which is in the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. At this time, we're going to yield to Bishop Hill for the prayer. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today in the name of Jesus asking father god uh, that you would simply be in this place today god that you would father god cause the very love and the very peace that passes all understanding father god to keep minds and hearts god i thank you that you are the lifter of our heads you are the joy of our lives you are our redeemer and we just want to say thank you for being father god the peace Thank you, Father God, for being our help, our ever-present help in the time of trouble. Lord, we thank you that this is a day that you've made, Lord, and in spite of circumstances, we will rejoice and be made glad in it. God, I pray that you, Father God, would so move in the midst of this family, Lord, that you would bring them, Father God, the comfort that only you can, the comfort that only your word can, for we trust you, we love you, and we know that you love us. God, we thank you for every blessed thing that you'll do today for this family every blessed thing that you'll do in this place in this atmosphere and God we thank you for your word that'll come forth that'll bring comfort that'll bring peace and joy and so for everything you do God we'll give you the glory we'll give you the honor and the praise in the mighty name of Jesus in Jesus name amen But I'm not broken, wounded, but time will heal. Heavy the load, the cross I bear. Yet still I, and I, I don't know which way to go, yet still I, oh, no matter what the situation is, yet still I.
still I rise. We have come to the part of today's program where we are tasked with what I deem as the most difficult eulogy I've had to share in all of my more than 25 years of ministry. But I am so thankful for the comfort of the Holy Spirit who is always whispering to us down through the corridors of eternity the mysteries of God's purpose and plan for our life. And on today, I pray that this word brings not just hope to the hearts of those who are grieving, specifically who I love and who we love here at this church the most, and Gail and her family. But also pray that we leave here with action plans as to how we ought to move forward. To been given the word that will come from the book of origin, the book of creation, God's story as to how it all began. In Genesis chapter number four, verse number 10, that's why I would ask those of you who were following along with me in the Bible, if you would meet me there. Genesis chapter four, verse number 10, the Bible says, but the Lord said, speaking to Cain, the brother of Abel, what have you done? The thunderous voice of heaven speaks with emphatic expiration and he said, listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Today as God gives me grace and Holy Spirit gives me God, and as those of you who are real intercessors pray for me, I wanna take the next eight minutes preaching from this subject focus that will ring in Gail's soul forever. The Lord told me to tell you that this story is to be continued. To be continued. There are so many questions that people often have for God whenever unforeseen things happen in life. I wanna stand flat footed on this poor pit on today to announce that God is good and everything that is of God is also good. It is the writer James in James chapter 1 verse number 17 who records and who also brings us to a solace and understanding that every good and perfect gift is from above. It come up down from the Father of heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows. It's James who let us the very character and in of God's plan and also his intended place for our lives is good. God doesn't just do good for us, but the very character of God within himself is good. So the theological phenomenon that people often wrestle with is this. How can a good God allow for bad things to happen to good people? I want to stand here and tell you on today, my brothers and sisters, those of you who are on campus and those who are online, when God created man, he said it is good. And since God's announcement of all things being good, nothing has stopped God's plan from being good. Some now in the earth that wasn't present in the garden when God declared that things were good. The thing that I'm talking about on today is something called sin. Sin contaminated and distorted of righteousness. It contaminated and distorted the seed of righteousness, but it did not disturb the infinite and divine plan of God from still coming to pass. I come to tell you the story on today. As we sit, all of us wrecked with grief and 
overwhelmed with questions, to talk to a God who we've never seen, but those of us who have faith, we still know that not only does God exist, he is not a distant deity that exists in the sky, who will only meet once our souls are disassociated from our mortal bodies. But my Bible said that God is a very present help in times of need. And that when you draw unto him, he'll draw unto you and show you great and mighty things to come. I want to let you know that even during this disturbing time that we're all faced with, with uncertainty, with what took place that has assembled us all here on today, we're asking questions, how, when, and why could some this happen? I want to let you know that there's nothing new under the sun. And ever since God created man and sin came into the earth, sin contaminated and also discredited the purpose and plan of God for what he had for man. And this is what we see in the context of Genesis chapter 4. It's taking place between, between two blood brothers, Cain and Abel, first descendants of Adam and Eve. The, the Bible said that Adam and Eve first sons were Cain and Abel. And Cain and Abel one day brought an offering before God and as they came before God, I want you to understand today that God does not just judge the things that we can see with our eye. That's why you have to be careful when you look at people's outside and you make judge and speculations about who they are based upon what you can see. Because the Bible said that, that, that man looketh on the outward, but it's God who looketh at the person's heart. So these two brothers, Cain and Abel, come before God to make a sacrifice, to make an offering, to bring the offerings before God. And God rejected the offering of Cain, but received the offering of Abel. It had nothing to do with what they offered, but everything to do with the character and condition of Abel's heart versus that of Cain's heart. And I've come to let somebody know in this place on today that you better be very careful that you don't count out the people who don't look the part or who don't meet your protocol or agendas because it's God who can use who he wants when he won't, how he wants, because he's God and there's no caucus or legislation that can vote him in office or out of office, but when God's ready to execute his plan and purpose for, for, for our lives, it's going to come to pass. So from that moment of God rejecting Cain's offering, Cain chooses to kill his own brother. He chooses to not confront the jealousy and envy within himself, but he chooses to take matters into his own hand. And he chooses to execute the first act of crime and violence that we see from the conception of the universe that's still happening to this day. But once again, as I told you in my thesis, though sin contaminated the righteous seed of God, it did not disturb the plan of God from still coming to pass. I've come to let you know in this place on today that God has already gone to the universe far before any of us were conceived in our mother's womb. And God doesn't just have a backup plan, but God has an ultimate plan that's going to work together for our good. Because those of us who love him and who are called according to his purpose, what the enemy mean for bad, God's plan and purpose will still work together for the good. My brothers and sisters, this is when I introduce you on this afternoon to something called the gospel. I would be absolutely remorse to stand before you flat-footed on this pulpit, but behind this, sacred, behind this sacred desk to only let you think that what we see that took place in the life of Cain and Abel, what took place from the conception of the universe, from the time of Genesis that's still in operation to the finality of the book of Revelations, I would be absolutely remorse to let you think that the devil will have the last say. I've come to let you know that even when Cain and Abel experienced this gruel reality from the conception of time, God still had a plan in place. And after 40 and two generations, that which had become contaminated had now been redeemed through the finished work of Jesus Christ. And I don't know who's under the sign of my voice on today, but I've come to let you know that you don't have to take matters into your own hand because there's a God who sits up high and who's able to execute justice down low. And if you choose to place your faith and focus on him, 
I've come to also let you know on today that things got to work together for the good. So we see even from Cain being, from Cain slaying his brother Abel, the Bible said in Genesis chapter number four, verse 10, that Abel's blood is still crying from the earth. I've come to let you know, my brothers and sisters, not only is, Cain, uh, not only is Abel's blood crying from the earth, but also the blood of our kids, 24 years old and under, are crying from the streets of Birmingham. The blood of Mia Nickerson, 21 years old, who was shot to death on January the 10th in her driveway, is crying from the streets of Birmingham. The blood of Jaquan Carpenter, 24 years old, who was shot and killed on January the 11th, is crying from the streets of Birmingham. The blood of Markel Sanders, 15 years old, shot and killed on January the 14th by his own cousin, is crying from the earth. The blood of Christian Norris, hallelujah, and Jolly, 20 years old, shot to death on February the 16th, is still crying from the earth. The blood of Raul and Jail, 21 years old, shot to death on February the 26th, is crying from the streets of Birmingham. The blood of Fong Gwyn, 21 years old, shot and killed on March the 3rd, is crying from the streets of Birmingham. And on today I came and I can hear the blood of mahogany crying from the earth and her blood is crying to the teens and adolescents and she's saying listen to your parents her blood is saying don't trust people that don't have your best interests in mind her blood is saying and crying to her cousin her other family members don't delay in making the decision to live your life for God her blood is crying to the seats of state legislators in Governor K. Ivey's office asking why in the hell did Alabama just sign the largest prison con construction bill in 2021 for $1.3 billion set to build two new prisons and incarcerate 8,000 inmates with those same dollars that are used to build prisons based off of data comprised from the drops of race based upon kids that drop out of school from the collective data we can take those dollars and institute rehabilitation programs and also transition programs so that our kids are not housed in prisons but they can live out their purposes in life our babies' bloods are crying from birmingham streets and they're focused on fight over the Magic City Classic, or what's gonna take place, is the Classic gonna happen at Legion Field or Protective Stadium. Our babies' bloods are crying from the streets of Birmingham, and we're focused on how we're gonna spend 500,000 on the entertainment and marketing of the needs for the Classic event that's coming up in October. Blood is crying from the streets of Birmingham, and I've come to stand flat-footed, even if I get in trouble on today, to let the world know that we got to understand that when we vote, not just nationally, but locally, we have authority to take people named leaders who are heartless, who don't care about people, who aren't putting legislations and systems and programs in place with our dollars in order for the earth to be restored. We have a right to get them out of the office so that the blood that we hear crying from the earth won't cry out in vain. Not only is the blood crying from the earth in the streets of Birmingham, but I've come to let you know on today, there's some blood that's crying from a hill called Golgotha over 2,000 years ago. There's a man named Yeshua Hamashiach who was born in Bethlehem. The question was asked, is there anything good that can come out of Bethlehem? Not only is the blood of Jesus crying from Bethlehem, but I've come to let you know that Jesus lived 33 years, 33 and a half years, and in his 33 and a half year mission, I've come to let you know in this place on today, Jesus' purpose and intent was to restore everything that had been messed up by man. I've come to let you know on today that not only did Jesus shed his blood so that we can be saved, and now be considered the righteousness of God but I've come to let you know in this place on today that Jesus' blood was shed so that when we shed blood all the blood that we shed won't be shed in vain I am absolute confident in this place on today that when you are absent from the body you will be present in the presence of Jesus I know with confidence where mahogany's eternity would be spent hallelujah had a praying mama and some surrounding family members that prayed for i've come to let you know in this place on today that not only is mahogany's
blood crying from the streets of Birmingham. I'm proud of her mama who ended up the courage to have a conversation with me and say, Pastor, my baby's life won't be in vain and we're going to take this to the streets. I'm proud to let you know in this place on today. This past week, I've had two meetings with people from offices in D.C. And we're putting an action plan in place to bring change to the streets of Birmingham. We don't have to wait for city council. We don't have to wait for the mayor's office. Look around. Ain't none of them here today anyway. Which goes to show me if his people who were called by his name would humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways, seek his face, then will he heal from heaven and begin to heal our land. It's time for churches to stop focusing more on who got the most members, who bring in the most money, who can preach the best, who can hoop the best. And it's time for us to start putting plans in place to make sure our babies are accounted for, to make sure the widows and orphans are accounted for, to make sure that we can put rehabilitation plans and programs in our communities. I've come to let you know in this place on today that even through this, God's going to get the glory. And I digress to lay in this plane. I told you in my opening that my title was going to be to be continued. I've, gone, I've come to let you know in this place on today that when you give your life to Jesus Christ, you only die one time, but you live twice. I've come on today. I can hear my hearken is speaking into my ear saying, Pastor, let my family know. Let my cousins know. Let the viewers online know. Let everybody know so that my blood being spilled won't be in vain. She's telling me to let you know why blood is running through your body. Why there's a post in your corroded brachial and radial artery. While you're still in your right mind. While you still have the functionality of your limbs. She's telling me to let you know today you got a chance to make a choice to give your life to Jesus Christ. I know there are a lot of people in this day and time who ascribe to Scientology. You are three percenter. You are, you are claimed to the Muslim faith. But I've come to let you know there's only one way that you can be saved. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father except by me. If any man be in Christ, he or she is a new creation. Old things passed away. I don't care what people got to say about you. When you give your life to Christ, what people got to say don't even matter. Because he'll take your past and he'll cover it up with some called the blood. So that now when the Father sees you, he don't see your sin, but he sees the blood of Jesus that's crying from Calvary's hill. I don't know who I'm talking to in this place on today. But while you still got time on your clock, you don't know when your clock is going to expire. You ought to make a choice to give your life to Jesus. Because when you give your life to Jesus, on the other side, you will also be able to spend eternity with the same Savior that gave your life. I'll close with this. And when I was growing up, I used to love watching superheroes. One of my favorite superheroes, my favorite superhero was the Incredible Hope. My second favorite superhero was Batman. Batman, Batman, back when I was growing up, I'm aging myself, I'm 40 years old. When I was growing up, we, 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 we didn't have flat screen TVs and, and color TVs. We, we, had, we, had, we had one color TV that was probably eight inches and it sat in the kitchen. And we only watched it when we had family time, but we had black and white TV. And when I was growing up, we used to watch cartoons. When you get to the end of the cartoon segment, Looney Tunes, Batman, all of the cartoons would have a screen at its end and it would say to be continued. I never forget as an adolescent I was growing up and I was watching Batman one day and I love Batman and you all know that every movie that we see or every storyline is comprised of three characters. One there's a victim, second there's a, uh, there's a villain, and third there will always be the superhero who come to save those who are victims. And this one day, the Joker had got the best of Batman, and Batman was asleep. And the screen came on, and it said, to be continued. And my young adolescent said, I didn't know what to be continued mean. And I thought that there would be no more Batman. And I had to have my uncle explain to me what to be continued mean. And he said that when you see to be continued, that means that the story is not over. And so in my young adolescence, I sat there and watched Batman asleep. 
not knowing that Batman was a superhero. And when you're a superhero, you have something called kryptonite. So that when the villain think that he gets the best of you, your kryptonite kicks in and a resurrection takes place. And so a few weeks pass by. But the next time I turn Batman on, not only did Batman come back on the screen in his old suit, but when Batman came back on, it was a new episode, a new series. Batman had a suit called Regeneration. Batman had taken off his old cape, put on a new cape, and Batman came back to take over Gotham. And the devil and the penguin who thought they got the best of him, his first order of business was to deal with the Joker and second to deal with the penguin. I've come to let you know on today, I ain't here to talk about cartoons. I ain't here to talk about Batman. I'm here to talk about Jesus. I've come to let you know on today that when you give your life to Jesus, your story don't end in death. I've come to let you know that your story has a to be continued. And on the other side, you will have something called a glorified body. That's why you shouldn't be focused on the body that you have in this earth. Yes, we want to stay in shape. Yes, we want to take care of our, our bodies. Yes, women. It is Women's National uh, uh, Appreciation Month. And yesterday was, was Women's National. It's a national day for women. And we have to get serious about heart disease and diabetes and all these sicknesses that's wrecking our community. But I ain't come to preach to you about these bodies on today. I've come to let you know that when you are absent from this body on the other side, I can see mahogany taking this body off. I know you walked by today and you saw her in her old form, but on the old, but on the other side, she's been given a new body. You wouldn't be able to recognize her if you were able to see her on today, because she got a new suit that she's put on, because her story hadn't ended. Her story is to be continued, and on today, I want to offer an opportunity in just a moment for somebody to receive a to be continued story, so that when your story on this side ends you will also have eternity on the other side. So we've heard the blood of Jesus cry from the earth. We've heard the statistics and data cry from the earth. I understand and I have full confidence in my spirit that Mahogany's story is to be continued. Not just continued on the other side, but as God is my witness for the rest of her family's life, I'm going to fight like hell that her story continues on this side. Not, on, not, not only is Mahogany's blood crying from the streets of Birmingham, I prayed in Holy Spirit, I asked, I said, Holy Spirit, how can I leave Gail, the mother of Mahogany and her beautiful baby, how can I leave the family with the message of hope? How can we begin this process, which we're already in, of restoration? How can we eradicate grief? How can we dissipate this reality of guilt? Sometimes, parents, you, you take on the weight of your children's decisions. The Bible said that we ought to train up children in the way that they should go. That when they're old, they won't depart from how you trained them. But though you train them, you can put them in the best schools, private school. You can read them bedtime stories every night. You can sign them up to play soccer, synchronized swimming. Volleyball, kickball, softball, football, and baseball. You can keep them, keep them active out the streets. You can, you, can, you, you can put them in the best neighborhood that Birmingham has to offer. You can do all that stuff as a parent, but you're still not responsible for the decisions that they make. And if truth be told, all of us in this room on today, if you've lived long enough, you've had to cross that threshold called adolescency. And we made some straight up stupid decisions. We made some decisions that should have been to all of our demise. And it's only by the grace of God that I'm standing here on today. And many of us are standing here under the sound of my voice. But I've come to let you know on today, I heard the voice of mahogany come down the corridors of eternity. And it began to whisper in my ear. And I closed. And I leave this final message to you, Gail. And this was so prophetic, and God was tapping you on the shoulder back in December, giving you affirmation that it's going to be all right. And Mahogany had a conversation with me this week that I referred back to that she'd had with you 
on December the 26th at 1.48 a.m. And Mahogany told me to leave this with you, Mama. She said, I just want you to know I love you. And if you ever need anybody, I'm here. Whether it's an ear or shoulder, you've done an amazing job of molding me to be who I am. I appreciate you. For life, I know you're the only one who really has my best interests. So I'm going to listen and take heed to everything you say, Mama. I'm so sorry for everything I put you through. I wish I could take it back, but I can't. But from this day forward, I just want to make you proud. It's not too many like you. And I know I got to make you proud, and I'm going, and I'm 20, and I already start, I'm, I'm ready to start to listen to you, Mom. I want to do how like you have been pushing for me to do. So these are my next steps. And she responded back after she sent that message. So good night, my first lady. You are truly a black queen. And I'm striving to be just like you. I've come to let you know on today, church. Come to let you know, Gail, that your baby was prophesying before we even got to this day. She didn't say goodbye. She said good night. Because one day, we'll be together on the other side. Because her story is to be continued. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm going to ask now, before the funeral directors come, and we are dismissed from this place, if everyone besides Gail, I'm going to ask if everyone would stand. Everyone. I'm going to preach. I'm going to preach. The pastor got it. I promise you I do. I'm going to ask ushers. I'm going to ask gatekeepers that you help me control this environment. No one is walking. No one is moving. If you're under the sound of my voice, I need every head bow, every eye closed. I want to whisper to you these sentiments of Dr. King from his final speech. He said, I too have a desire to live long. But long life has its place. Dr. King had finally accepted the will of God for his life. And he understood that though all of us have a desire to live long, no man knows the day nor hour when he will return. I want to speak first and foremost. There are two waves of people I want to speak to. Every head by your eyes closed. I said and read to you from January the 1st, 2024, to this date, when the month of March, we're not even 90 days into 2024, and we've experienced in the city of Birmingham alone, this is local data, not national data. We've experienced almost more than 12 young people who are not even 25 years old to lose their life. When you're young, I want, you, I want everybody 25 and under to listen to me very well. When you're, when you're young, you live as if you're invincible. Like nothing can happen to you. And I want to extend the opportunity on today for you to make the greatest decision that you will ever make in your life to assure your eternity. I am absolutely confident that that text message that Mahogany sent to her mother on December, December 26, that was a message of grace sent to you, Gail, to let you know that God was with her. And though she was ready to get it right, God had got it right. And she was snatched out of this world of wickedness. And I believe that she received, and I know that she received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I want to tell you on this pulpit today that hell is real. 
And I'm not here to preach about the fire of hell. That is the least of my worries. What scares me the most about hell is to be eternally dismissed from the presence of God. And on today, God is extending to your opportunity not to focus on heaven, but in order for heaven to come to you now in this life through Jesus Christ. My second appeal is to those who have been wrestling with God. You, you, you've been wrestling with God in your conscious thinking. You will try to out-rationalize God. Well, if God is love and if God is real, how, how can good stuff happen to, how can bad stuff happen to good people? It's not God. God is good. It's sin. It's wickedness. It's spiritual principality. It's spiritual wickedness in high place. The devil is real. He's not dressed up in a red suit with pointed horns on his head. The enemy operates through the influence of people. And I've come to let you know in this place on today that a real God, a loving God, is extending to you on today the opportunity of grace. And my Bible is clear. I don't care how you have lived. I don't care if you can't here smelling like weed or alcohol. Let me break the tradition of preaching. Ain't no judging up in here for all have sinned. Even the preachers on this pulpit that they all have sinned and at some point in time fallen short of the glory of God. But I'm so glad that though we have fallen to sin, we don't have to die in sin. And I don't care what your condition or situation is today, all you have to do is believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and my Bible, not the manipulation of man's religion. My Bible said if you believe and confess that he was buried but resurrected from the grave, my Bible said you will be saved. You will be saved. You will be saved. And I want to lay my head down tonight. I want to make my father proud, knowing that the message of, of grace was extended to those who were under the sound of my voice. Not knowing if tonight when you lay down, you take your last breath. Not thinking, I'm going to put it off and I'm going to do it when I get a chance. This is the only chance that you have to make a decision that will, will impact your eternity. Today, there are some of you right now who are standing who have already made that decision. And you are 1,000% confident that you are saved. But then there are those of you right now who are standing. Every head is by your eyes closed. No moving unless there's an emergency. All you have to do is believe and receive. There are no cameras on you. Nobody is looking at you. Right now, all of heaven is watching, waiting for you to make a decision in order for your story to be continued. If you're under the sound of my voice right now and you have already received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you know God forbid but if something happened to you tonight and you take your final breath you know that your story be, will be to, to be continued because you made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. Right now I want you to take your seat. If you haven't made the decision stay standing. If you made the decision, if you know for sure that if I die tonight, I'm going to heaven. If you're not sure, if you're not sure, I want that decision to be made on today. So Father, I thank you on today for this word. I thank you for the message of grace. I thank you for the life of mahogany. I thank you also, Father, for the legacy that will be continued through the, through the life of her daughter. I thank you, Father, for the amazing expression of love that was given through her mother. And I thank you, Father, for the days that you loaned her to us on this side of eternity. Now, Father, I pray as I conclude and close my book, that everyone under the sound of my voice and those who may also be watching this service online 
have decided to make you their savior so that their story will also be continued. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Before we start moving, I have a few instructions to give to the entire house. There are about to be a lot of moving pieces. And so these are not just my requests. These are the requests that have been given to me directly from the family and also given directly to me from persons who are also responsible for what's taking place behind the scenes that you can't even see. In just a moment, I'm gonna ask the funeral directors to carry us forth with the duration of making sure that we can get to our interment service. I'm gonna ask, unless you have an emergency, to please, in just a moment, I'm gonna make sure I come back after the presentation. I'm gonna ask that you will not leave from the sanctuary at all until all the ministers descend from the pulpit and also as we're able to escort the family out to the vehicles. Please listen to me very well. This is what I've been, this is what I've been charged and tasked to do as Gail's pastor. I looked her in her eyes as I sat with her and her family and I assured her on today that I was gonna make sure that we execute everything that their family requested. For just a moment, I want you to only imagine how overwhelmed they're feeling right now. We've been, we've been tasked with the effort to make sure that they exit directly from the building to get to the vehicle so that we can get to the cemetery. I'm gonna ask that you, you, you try not to stop and hold them up in the best of your area. Also, please don't go to the family cars and knock on the window and try to get them to let the window down. We have tasks that we've already been charged with. And so we ask that you will respect the family's request as I'm giving them to you right now. I'm gonna ask now if you will receive Reverend Webb as he comes and gives a presentation on behalf of the Sheriff Office. Let's receive him now. I have a resolution for the family from Jefferson County Sheriff's Office where Sheriff Mark Petway is Sheriff of Jefferson County and it reads to the family, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. John 3.16 from the King James Version. It is with deep, deep sympathy that the Jefferson County Sheriff's Department under the leadership of Mark Petway express our heartfelt condolences and deep sympathies to the family of Mahogany Jackson. It is presented on the ninth day of March in the year of 2024 I have here unto you set my hand and caused the seal of Jefferson County to be asphyxiated. I didn't read the whole thing because of time. At a later date, you can read it uh, for yourself. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Also on today, to those who are viewing online, there's going to be a lower third on the screen. I'm so proud of Gail for being such an amazing and courageous mother to ante up the grace throughout this, these past 10 days. I've had a chance to meet with them several times and I'm so proud that this week we were able to actually have um, a specific account that was established which is the, uh, a special mahogany fund. And let me give you the exact details that I were given so that we can also into this account on behalf of mahogany and also specifically going directly into her daughter. Can we give God praise for that? Amen. Yes. 
And so those who are online, you can see this, but those who are on campus, amen, between now and Monday, if you want to sow into uh, the benefit account for Mahogany Jackson, it's going to be with a SIPCO credit union, okay, federal credit union. And um, for confidentiality purposes, I don't want to uh, provide the account number, but if you go in and specifically let them know that you want to give into the Mahogany uh, Jackson benefit account, amen, you can do that. I'm here standing proud on today to let you know, let me give you the exact name, amen. Well, I don't want to give the name uh, for confidentiality purposes, but there is a national organization that we are already partnered with out of Washington, D.C., Yes, that we met with this week, and they have already assured that $3,000 is going into the family of Mahogany. Let's give God praise for that. And we're also standing in partnership from my church, amen, from my church at CBF Ministries. We're going to start, and we pray that we're the first church to stand in agreement to make sure uh, that this family's future is secured and also this beautiful baby girl of Mahogany as well. We're going to stand, and we're going to sow $500 into the family of Mahogany. Let's give God praise for that. And so, again, if you want to sow into this amazing benefit, uh, you can do that. The Mahogany Jackson Benefit Account is going to be with the SIPCO Credit Union. Amen. 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 Well, that's everything that the uh, family requested for today's program. Again, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get ready to turn the program over uh, to the funeral home. They're going to direct us from here. We're going to ask in just a moment only. Listen to this very well, please. The family has already assigned those who are responsible for the flowers. In just a moment, they're going to come and retrieve the flowers. Also, the family already have assigned those who are responsible to be the pallbearers. I'm going to ask in just a moment that everyone remain seated. I'm going to ask the family to stand first. We're going to descend down from the pulpit. We're going to greet the family and get ahead of the family. We're going to ask for all the pallbearers to meet us in the, the, the vestibule area where you entered as the family so that we can meet the uh, funeral home directors there so we can assist them to the car. Uh, last, last request I asked of everybody, amen, is please, 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 don't get mad at the family. Amen. If you want to get mad at somebody, get mad at me. Amen. Amen. Father, we honor you on today. We bless you for this time. We thank you now. Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace, we call on you now like never before, that you will encapsulate and engulf the hearts of this hurting family and that you will bless them with your blessed assuredness that even through this, you're going to get the glory. Now in the days that are to come, all the their steps, only like you can, in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. It's now in your hands. Thank you. We're going to ask now if all the flower bearers will come. Let's go ahead and have all of our Paul bearers to go ahead and meet us at the rear of the building. Thank you so much.
tell them I love you.